Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I want to take a few minutes and I want to talk to you a little bit about answering <clears throat> short answered questions for AP Environmental Science. One of the things that you need to get in the habit of is answering incomplete sentences. You will see when we look at some of the common verbs used to ask AP pre response questions, they require you to express complete thoughts and complete ideas, and the easiest and best way to do that is by writing complete sentences. Some of the common verbs that you'll see in these AP questions are identify, define, describe, discuss, and explain. You will also occasionally see compare and contrast. Now, you can see that they're all different words, but sometimes students have confusion as to what the differences are. Um, so I want to take a minute and make sure you understand what these terms mean and how to answer a question and ask you to do one of these things. And I want you to be able to see the differences between them. And one of the best ways to do that is just to work through some examples. So, here we have a question. And it says to identify two causes of eutrophication. You should have already read about eutrophication before you start this part of the assignment. If you haven't done so, go ahead and stop the video and go back and read your section on eutrophication. Now, the word identify here is our verb. That's what we're supposed to do. And this is one of the few things that, that you can actually do without writing complete sentences. However, I still want you to write complete sentences to be in the habit. So what are we trying to identify? We're trying to identify causes of eutrophication. Break the question apart. Now, you could say that eutrophication is caused by an increase of nutrients in a water supply. That would be a cause. However, if I express it that way, it's, it's hard to come up with more than one reason. So there's a couple ways that we could say this to give more than one reason. We could say it's caused by an increase in nitrogen in the water supply, or an increase in phosphorus in the water supply, or an increase in sulfur. We could give different nutrients that increase. Another way to do it is to talk about sources of those nutrients. You could say uh, that eutrophication is caused by runoff from fertilizer from a farmer's fields, or eutrophication is caused by runoff uh, from manure and organic waste from feedlots. There are lots of different ways that you can answer the question. But the key thing is that you just have to identify two. And when you identify, you don't have to explain or discuss or elaborate. You just tell what those causes are. So here's an example of how you could answer that question. It's just one way. So identify two causes of eutrophication. Eutrophication can be caused by fertilizer runoff from fields uh, or by runoff from organic waste in feedlots. So again, I gave you a couple ways out loud on how to answer the question, and I just chose one as my example. We're not discussing it, we're not describing it, we're merely identifying the causes. So this is sometimes the simplest to do. A lot of times when you get AP questions, it will say identify and describe, and then you have to add more, or identify and discuss. But if it just says identify, all you have to do is tell what it's looking for. In this case, causes of eutrophication. <clears throat> Another term that you'll see less often but you will occasionally see in AP questions is the term define. So most of you know how to give a definition. We just have to explain what something is unambiguously. Okay? So if you've done your reading, you should know what eutrophication is. And a simple definition would just be uh, an increase in nutrients in a water supply, an excessively high level of nutrients in the water supply. So simple definition of eutrophication. We're just telling what it is. So we didn't identify, but we gave a definition. Eutrophication is an excessively high level of nutrients in a body of water. So said it a little bit differently, but the same idea. We don't have to elaborate. We just tell what it is. We just explain what the term means. A third common term that you'll see in AP questions is the term described. Now, when AP writers that write the questions use the term described, they are looking for a bit more than just define. A lot of times, you will start a described question with a definition. 
However, you have to elaborate upon that. So if we were starting here, we went back to our definition. We could say something like, eutrophication is an excessively high level of nutrients in a body of water. But if I stop there, I've only defined it. I have not described it. So I need to go beyond that. So I could talk about what causes eutrophication. Uh, it could be caused by runoff of fertilizer from fields. It could be caused by runoff from manure. It could be caused by natural processes of decaying leaves. I can also talk about and describe what it does. It lead, these excessive nutrients lead to growth of algae, which then die and then decay. Uh, as they decay, the bacteria that break them down use up the oxygen and water and can lead to fish kills. So notice, I gave a lot more than a definition. This doesn't have to be super lengthy, but it has to be more than just undefined. To show you it's not super long, here is an example written out. It's just a couple of sentences. Eutrophication is an excessively high level of nutrients in a body of water. So I've started with a definition. If I end there, though, I have not described it. I have only defined it. So now I have to, to give some detail. This high level of nutrients leads to algae growth. Um, it should say is algae die. I left out a word there. Stuff happens. Uh, bacteria break down the dead algae. These bacteria use the oxygen in the water, and lower oxygen levels can lead to fish kills. So here I have defined it, but I went beyond. I've told a little bit about what causes it, and I've told a little bit about the effects. So now I have given a description of eutrophication. The next term that we're going to look at is discuss. Discuss is a little bit different than describe. Okay? So if I'm describing, I am just talking about what the process is and the implications. If I'm discussing, I, I want to relate it to a bigger picture. One of the common things that, that we sometimes do in discussion questions is to give examples. It's not required, but you can do that. So this question is a little more focused, though. It doesn't just say discuss eutrophication. That would be very broad. But it says discuss the effects of eutrophication. So we want to focus on the verb, but we also want to focus on the details. So to answer this question, I don't need to talk about the causes. I'm not going to talk about runoff from fields or from feedlots or from decaying bacteria. We're not talking about the causes of eutrophication. We're just talking about the effects. I also want you to notice that effects is plural. I have to give more than one effect. Well, two is more than one. I don't have to give 15 effects, but I have to give at least two. It doesn't specify the number, but effects is plural. So what are some effects of eutrophication? Well, one effect is there's an increased growth in algae. Well, an effect of the increased growth in algae is that it blocks out sunlight to lower levels of water, which can harm plants on the bottom. Another effect of that increased growth of algae, which is caused by the increased nutrients, uh, as it dies, it leads to increased bacteria, which use up oxygen. So another effect would be lower dissolved oxygen levels, which can then lead to fish kills. So there I've actually given about four effects. I don't have to give that many, but I have to give them. But notice, I can't just list the effects. I can't just say, the effects of eutrophication are um, less sunlight and lower oxygen levels. If I said that the effects are less sunlight and lower oxygen levels, I have identified some effects, but I have not discussed them. When I say that one of the effects is um, increased algae, which causes less sunlight, now I'm discussing what that leads to. Or I can say decaying algae causes less oxygen, which causes fish kill. I'm not just identifying one effect, but I'm explaining how it leads to other things, so I'm starting to discuss. Another common thing to do when you have discussed that, that I did not do here, but you can add it, are specific examples. Often it's a good idea when it asks you to discuss to describe what you're talking about and then to relate them together but also to give examples. Here is my answer, though, for discuss. Eutrophication leads to increased growth of algae in water. This reduces the amount of sun reaching the water below. This can affect plant and animal life below. As the algae dies and decays, bacteria use oxygen from the water, 
This leads to a lower dissolved oxygen content, which can cause fish gills. So notice, I have a couple of effects, okay? Reduced sun, lower dissolved oxygen. But I didn't just identify those two effects. I talked about how those cause a chain of events, okay? Uh, so I'm, I'm giving you some discussion to that. Again, another way that you could, could discuss once you've identified some effects is you, you could give an example. Um, you could write something personal. In my neighborhood, a farmer was fertilizing his fields, run off from the fertilizer, gathered his farm pond, caused an algae bloom, and killed off his, the fish in the pond. So there are different ways that you can approach a discuss question, but it has to be more than an identify it, and it's not really just to describe. You need to kind of start to explain relationships or to talk about examples when you look at a discuss. Okay, the next term that I want to look at here is explain. Uh, you'll see this one a lot. And the key thing, anytime it says explain, you have to have a cause and effect and you have to talk about the relationship. So explain how farming can lead to eutrophication. So our effect is going to be eutrophication, our cause is going to be farming. But we have to tie those together. Now there's more than one way to answer this question because farming can cause eutrophication in more than one way. A couple that we've already mentioned. Runoff of fertilizer from fields can get in the water supply and cause eutrophication. Runoff from feedlots can get organic matter which lead to eutrophication. It doesn't ask for more than one, it just asks for one. You can give them both if you want, but if we just want to explain one way that it can, we could just answer that. So when farmers fertilize their fields, some of the fertilizer is dissolved by rain and runs off into ponds and streams. This increases the amount of nutrients in the water and can lead to eutrophication. So when you have an explain, you have to have an effect and a cause, but you have to relate them together. So once you show how the cause is related to the effect, how the cause causes the effect, then you have explained. Those are the terms that you're going to see most often. Occasionally you'll also see compare and contrast. Most of you would probably know what this is on your own. It's a little more direct. Compare, you want to tell how things are alike. And contrast, you want to tell how things are different. So just, if it asks compare and contrast, make sure you do both. So here it says compare and contrast natural eutrophication and cultural eutrophication. I would probably start by saying they're both eutrophication. They're both an increase in nutrients in the water supply. They both have similar effects. Um, they both lead to lower oxygen levels and possibly fish kills. So all of those things are comparing. But you also need to contrast. Well, Natural eutrophication occurs from natural phenomena like decaying leaves or um, waste matter from wild animals, whereas cultural eutrophication occurs because of man-made reasons, runoff from fertilizer, livestock, those kind of things. Make sure that you get both in your answer and you'll have a compare and contrast. Both natural and cultural eutrophication cause an increase in nutrients in the water supply. Compare. They both lead to increased algae growth and lower dissolved oxygen. Compare. Natural eutrophication occurs by natural processes, like leaves and organic matter decaying in a swamp, or too much yeast droppings in a pond. But cultural eutrophication is different. It's caused by man-made processes like fertilizer runoff or excessive waste from feedlots. Contrast. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea of how the different verbs are used. Uh, when you do your assignment, for uh, the Lorax video, pay attention to the verbs, answer everything in complete sentences, and if it's asking you to discuss, don't just give me a definition. If it's asking you to describe, don't just identify, okay? Focus on those verbs, make sure you know the differences.